I heard that. Okay. You know, after so many months trying to set up for hybrid meetings, hybrid meaning people in the room and people joining us from uh, Zoom, and, and I just had so many failures until finally one of the technicians here in Laguna Woods Village agreed to come and meet me here and he fixed the problem. He, 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 uh, he, he adjusted the um, setting, the settings. Okay. So I, I don't know if you saw my t-shirt. It says bringing hope to hearing loss. I got this teacher t-shirt at the walk for hearing, which happened in June. A lot of the sponsors are listed on the back. Not all of them, but many of them. I'm going to adopt bringing hope to hearing loss as a theme for all of my meetings because um, we need to overcome the stigma of hearing loss. It exists and it's tough. I sometimes feel it. I've been I've been helping people with hearing loss for about 25 years and I'm no different than you. I have things change, um, ebbs and flows. I want I want to help people learn how to live well with hearing loss. Whatever situation you have where you're having a difficulty, there is an answer. There is a device or something you can do. Each and every person is different. Hearing loss is different. And what works for one piece person doesn't necessarily work for the next. So um, we, I'm perfectly willing to work with everybody individually to get you hearing where you're not hearing. And... Um, and because sometimes there's devices, uh, this, it's a conversation. Tony, at, yes. I lost your audio. I don't know if anybody else in Zoom has. Is that any better? You lost Alan? You can't hear me? Uh-oh. I that does sound different. Something sounds different. Testing one, two, three. Uh Joe, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, so Alan, it must be you. Joe can hear me. So she's um all right. So I'll let you work on that, Alan. Also, it's a proven fact that educated consumers hear better. So before you go willy-nilly off to a, a hearing aid dispenser or an audiologist, there's quite a few things you should learn so you understand what the process is. And that's what I'm it's here. It's my on. issue. That's what these meetings are for. So we'll be bringing hope to hearing less. I'm adopting that. Um, I want to thank our sponsors and our board members and volunteers. So Marla Peoples, Vice President, brand new, uh, Judy Mandel, Secretary. Jeff Chess is here, Treasurer. Uh, Daniel Boone is a, a new board member. Uh, he mostly helps with, uh, well, he helps with a lot of things, but visibly here, he helps with the refreshments. And I'm glad you came. Lynn, good to see you. Good to see you. I want to talk to you before you leave today. You and me, one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Thank you. Okay, Bob Rennie, brand new board member. He's over here. So Bob uh, was the uh, president at one time. Vice President, he's had every position you can have in a hearing loss support group at one time or another. The City of Orange chapter, the Orange County chapter. So he's here to help 
um, move this chapter forward. Alan is on camera. Um, Reg, well, I don't know where he is. He's greeting outside. Um, Alan Katsura, he's the Zoom administrator. Let's see, where is he? There he is right there on the screen. That's Alan. He's he's up, he's located right now in uh, Diablo Valley, Walnut Creek area. Amazing hearing, um, audiology advisor. So we have representing amazing hearing is Dr. Gabby. Um, audiology advisors. So there are so many things that go on behind the scenes and I get support from them to help you. Um, I'm I'm a uh, I'm not an audiologist. I'm not a hearing aid dispenser. Um, I don't know the ins and outs about specific hearing aids and it features and issues. So um, I go to them when I can't answer the question. I know a lot of stuff, but I depend on them. They help me get presenters. I mean, it's a lot of things they do. Uh, Caption Call, who is here today, you're going to meet uh, Michael and Logan. And um, they provide, they pay for the captions that you see on this TV. Um, okay, this meeting is being recorded. Okay, it'll be on YouTube eventually. This, uh, this room has a hearing loop. So if you have T-coil equipped hearing aids or cochlear implant, you can turn on your telecoil now and you'll hear me directly in your hearing aids without the reverberation, without the background noise. It's just a wonderful experience. And my last meeting that I had in July was all about the hearing loop. I've got plenty, if, if you need information, uh, there is a YouTube uh, video that you can watch and there's information on the table here. Okay. And you definitely email me if you if if you need me to give you that information. Help you find it. Um, this is the disclaimer. HLAA Mission Viejo chapter does not endorse any single product or service. Okay, so we got caption call here. This is not an endorsement. We've asked them to present. And they're going to provide you with information and um, and demonstration, uh, but it's not an endorsement. Um, they do they do pay for the captioning, which we appreciate. So uh, this meeting is intended to provide information, education, and support. Yay! They have a landline phone. They can even provide a landline network and but the only thing you need to have is internet in your home and they'll give you everything else they'll give you a phone number and a and a voice over ip number and um, you can talk to them about that today joe here's joe this is our captioner she's in chicago illinois she she gets paid indirectly uh, from Caption Call. All right. And Caption Call has actually been paying for captions for at least 13 years. Um, I used to work for Caption Call. How many people remember that? Yay. And I used to install captions, Caption Call phones in, in Laguna Woods. And one time they had me going up the coast of California and Oregon and Washington. I was installing phones all over the place. So that was when they were, you know, brand new, uh, when they first started. Um, I'm, the, I'm the leader for the Mission Viejo chapter. We are a 501c3 nonprofit tax exempt organization. Any deductions, uh, any donations, uh, that you make um, are tax deductible depending on your tax status. The chapter is all volunteer. No one receives any compensation of any kind, and we depend on your donations for support. So, Alan, you want to get this started? 
Jeff, you want to come in? Okay, we'll get, we'll get a gap. Alan and da Daniel, Daniel, Dan Daniel, come here. Give give Daniel one of these. Get for the other side. Okay, so we're gonna pass we're gonna pass the the basket around. And um, okay, Dick, you made it! Yay! Show girl. Yeah, I got your RSVP. All the ice cream still here. No, 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 no. Just come on in and we'll get you an ice cream. All right. Um, I invite you to check our website anytime, hlaamb.org. I try to put it on all of our literature, so you, you should find that. Okay, I'm the president. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, so you can find us there too. Okay, I'm now, I'm in, in just a minute, I'm going to introduce you to Michael Roebuck and um, Logan. But I have a little story that I wanna tell. I have a couple of them, but I'm just gonna do one today. My mother is 97 years old. She lives in San Diego, and I go down there quite often. And I, all, I go to all of her doctor's appointments. So I took her down to her primary care physician. I use something called live transcribe. And when we're sitting in the doctor's office, and by the way, her doctor wears a mask. And you know how difficult that is to understand somebody wearing a mask. So I use live transcribe that using the technology of artificial intelligence translates everything that he says and puts it in text. And he's just in awe of that. He's the doctor. And he said, what is that? What, where can I get more information about that? And the reason why he was asking is because he has a middle-aged patient who is profoundly, has profound hearing loss, can't afford hearing aids, lives with his family who has stopped talking to him because he doesn't understand what they're saying. It's that bad. He can't use a phone. He can't watch TV. He can't do any of those things. So I'm, I'm going to work with my mother's doctor to, uh, to introduce um, captioning, live transcribe. Um, I'm, I'm going to work down there with the San Diego chapter of the Hearing Loss Association. I want to see if the, the president down there can be more assistive, see if we can't get a donation of hearing aids, maybe from um, the Starkey Foundation, something. Isolation. This man is totally isolated. I started to cry in the office thinking about it. And the first thing I remember when I recognized that I had a hearing loss, my biggest problem was the phone. I want to make sure this guy gets a phone so he can call out and people can call him and kind of close that isolation gap just a little bit. So I'm going to work on that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get that information from Michael. Where where did Michael go? Oh, there you are. Okay. So really, that's that's my story, and it all and and the telephone is probably critically the most important thing. Um, this man is dependent on his family to get doctor's appointments and and information and all that, and they're kind of hostile. So getting this man a phone will be the beginning of him having some independence, uh, talking to his doctor and getting the information that he needs. So Michael, uh, let me get your, let me get your PowerPoint up here. Let's see. Oh. 
Uh-oh. Hold on. Let me work on something here. Hmm. I need to find that. I got to go to the drive. Yes, go to the drive. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is, uh, it's not a PowerPoint, it's a PDF, but that's okay. Just tell me when you want me to change the screen. Logan, you want to, you want, use the mouse and you can Logan, just. This is my... Tony, you haven't shared the screen yet. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Okay, I've got I've got to uh thank you. Hold on. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. Where did it go? I have to click on the flash right here. I, it has to be inside Zoom. So, okay. Participants can now see it. All right. Okay, who's going to talk? Oh. Do one more. You need the microphone. Oh, I need the microphone. I, I'm pretty loud, anyways. Well, but the people yes can't get to them. Okay. I've got one lady here who's up in North. Two people from oh, North okay. Chicago, one in Chicago. I don't think you've talked loud enough. All right, we'll give it a shot. Keep going, Mark. No, I'm looking for the one where the path where I can play. Right there. No, right there. Yeah. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Is it a YouTube video? No. Okay. What was this? What do you mean? Go ahead and go back to the thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the caption call phone, but as you know, caption call, if you have a hearing issue and the captions would help you then there's federal government, no charge, no installation fees. What the Capture Phone has, we try to connect you to your loved ones or anybody you're talking to. When it comes across the screen, their words are coming across the screens so you can actually see it. So you may not be able to hear the conversation very good, but you'll be able to caption this like you see Caption TV. The other thing the phone comes with is a voicemail and an answering machine. So anytime somebody calls in, it'll go ahead and take the, the caption. So you don't have to sit there and try to write everything down. It comes out as a caption. You can save the caption there. So then you can continue on and go, okay, yeah, Dr. Smith wants me there at one o'clock. Here's his number. So it captions everything, every call that comes in. So those are one of the strong points. Also, when we come out and install, we're going to download all your contacts that you have on your cell phone into the caption phone. So when you see somebody calling in, you know when your friends or whoever your important people are calling in, you can see it's them. It's a little bit closer to you. Sure, is that a little better? Thanks. And we're in all 50 states. As I said, we're federally funded. So anybody, as I said, who has a hearing issue can get a phone. The way you qualify for the phone is self. You tell me, you tell anybody from Caption Call that you have a hearing issue and you automatically qualify. You no longer need a doctor's note. You don't need any of that. The goal of Caption Call is to try to get you a phone so you can talk to your love, loved ones and understand the conversation. So that's about it. Any questions? Oh, shit. Wait for the microphone, Natalie. Oh, I have a, a very old phone, Tony. When Tony was working for you, she installed it. Have there been any improvements? 
I would say there's been quite a few improvements. We have a bigger screen now. Um, we're able we're able to put the phone in if you have internet, if you have a phone, even we can run off any wireless connection. Well, how can I get the new caption? Call? What I'll do is I'll take your information. We'll come out, change the old phone in for a new phone. Terrific. That'll be Another the better question. Sure. How is this live transcribe different from the caption call I have on my iPhone? Okay. We're not going to talk about live transcribe today, but I will say this. It's an independent, it does not work with the, with a telephone call. It just works independent. It's only for Android. Okay. Now, I don't want to talk about it now, but I just discovered a free app for Apple, for iPhone. But I don't, I, I can't give it to you right now, but I will share that with you. I'll probably put it in a newsletter and email it out to everybody. Okay, but live transcribe is not for telephone calls. No, I have closed captioning on my iPhone and it's fine. It's wonderful. Okay, then you don't need live transcribe. Okay. Oh, let me let me just say one thing. The only thing that the captions are captioning on your iPhone is like videos on your iPhone. It, it's not going to caption somebody sitting across from you at a table or at the doctor's office or at the pharmacy or at the bank. It, captions on iPhone don't work like that. Only work for sounds that are coming over the phone. Okay, that's enough for that. That's a, that's a different technology. It has nothing to do with phone calls. Okay. We can also give you a QR code if anybody wants to put it on their cell phone. We Logan has it here. You just take a picture of it. You can download it. They're going to ask you for a username and password, and you will have to qualify saying you do have a hearing issue. Is there filtering in the caption call phone for spam calls? Um, we've tried to... We've tried to go as much as possible with the 800 numbers, the 888 numbers, but now they're coming in on our same area code, 760-619-518. So um, that's what we're working on, but we have no way to stop every spam call. We can st stop a lot of the 800 numbers, the 888 numbers, but now when they're using the same area code that you're in, that's where the issue becomes. So if you have AT&T, Verizon, or, or one of those for your landline phone, they're the ones that are responsible to stop the spam. Now, having said that, and, and we're talking about using it for a home phone, network phone, um, there are spam blocker apps you can get for iPhone or Android. We're not going to talk about that here. Not today, not now, maybe later. Uh, <laughs> so spam is a carrier issue. It's a carrier issue. Okay. Um, here's the phone right here as you see it. And as I said, you no longer need a landline. If you have internet in the house, we can connect to the internet and you, get, you can use your same phone number that you have or we can give you a new phone number also. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I have an older phone, and um, if they don't dial the one before the prefix, I don't get it. Do the, does the new phone have the... Uh... That's a carrier issue, a carrier issue. That isn't anything that Caption Call can change. Who's your, who's your carrier? Who do you pay your phone bill to? AT&T. Okay, that's AT&T. Go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I got one of these phones about nine, ten years ago. And um, I, I'm sorry if it sounds negative, but um, I was wondering, uh, I had a problem with the speed 
of, uh, you know, when they were oh, typing it out, you know, and I found it too slow at that time. Now, has that improved at all? Or? It, it has improved. You can also blow up the letters or make the, lar the print larger. We say we're 99.9%. .9 As you hear the conversation, it's going across the screen. So I will say if it's a bad wireless connection, that's where there's some issues that may come up. But most of the time, we do have good wireless connections. Or if you have a landline, we just plug it into the landline. I've tried them all. I've tried um, CapTel. They're the slowest. And as far as I know, and, and I've tried, uh, they advertise on TV a lot right now. Caption. Clear caption. Clear caption. Right, yeah. Right. Um, I've tried that. They're OK. Um, Caption call has really been the Cadillac of captioning. They've all, it's been the most robust. Now, if you've got an old phone, um, I, I installed Natalie's phone in 2011, 2012. Yes, they've had two or three models since then. So get yourself a new phone and let's get you up to date. Let's make sure you've got good speed on your internet. Uh, even if you have the lowest speed in Laguna Woods, that should be fine. So a landline would be quicker? Yes, yeah, so it works better with a It will work ju just as good with a landline. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, the other thing is when we do install, we will put the phone usually where you are at most of the time. If you have a two-story house and you have trouble going up the stairs, we will qualify you for a second caption call phone also. we That's one of the bigger things we'll do now is make sure you have one downstairs, one upstairs for the convenience. And I've left everybody a uh, caption call form there. You just put your first, last name, address, and phone number, and then we take care of the rest. We also have them in English and Spanish. And as I said, we're throughout the United States, so if you have friends that need one, they can get one also this service is free to you the user there's there's no cost at all i thought i would i know you would probably get to that um the uh it's part of the ada yes part of the ada program it's part of the ada can i have the portable this thing keeps going out. Thank you, Dr. Gabby. Okay. Um, when you look at your phone bill, whether it's a cell phone or landline, and you see there's a universal charge and it's just a few cents, uh, that you are paying for it through, through your phone bill and everybody pays it whether you're using the service or not, but you'll never get a bill from Caption Call, never. And they'll come and install it and service it for free. Yeah, and if there is an update, uh, we can usually call into the phone and update the software package. If there's something going wrong, you don't like it, just give us a call. We'll come back out, pick it up. We'll put a new one in or... For some reason you just don't like it, we'll come out and get it and take it. Um, do you have a landline? Yes, it'd be the same telephone number. If you go, it's um I've left I'll give you my business card. Um I left the I'll give you some information on the back of the card. We're gonna have to run run. Um as I said, there's some information there. Usually when you get it, we come out within 48 hours, put it in. We will take time to walk you through it. And we would ask if you have somebody there who needs to be there, please have them come in so we can show them how the phone works also. A friend of mine has two lines that he uses. Can the caption phone accommodate two lines in any way? What do you mean by two lines? Is two different two different phone lines two in the house? Two different phone numbers. 
Um, we would probably have to put two phones on that. So one phone would have one line and the other phone would have the other number. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Can you just switch it? Yeah, limit there's no on, problem. No limit on. You can, uh, you can have them both. Okay. One's, I think, is CapTel a California? I think California. Yeah, she has CapTel, yeah. but it's- So a, you it, can have both in the house. But she doesn't want the landline. You she don't wants, want her to have a landline because it's in the guest room. So okay. a wireless will work better for her. All right, there you go. So there's no problem with doing a switch from- No, one there's company. no problem. Okay, thank you. They come out of separate funds. <laughs> yeah, I, at one time I had- Three phones, <laughs> testing them all. <laughs> Hold on. I, I know you don't want to talk about live transcript. I just want to say, because I'm using it now and love it, it drains the battery so badly that you have to carry a remote with you all the time. Just to... Okay. My... My son uh, lives in Texas, and he has provided us the main line and two iPhone for many years. And now my wife has a hearing problem. How can we solve this problem? For example, the caption call. So we have an app. Are you asking for your phone? For the phone or for the actual physical caption call phone? Right now, we don't have any. Just a regular you Mainline just... and uh, iPhone. You have an iPhone? Okay, that's that's you fine. Can, we can, we can, you can use this phone also in your house by hooking it up. Do you have internet in your house? Yes. Yeah, then it, 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 it this phone works off the internet. But the... And we can give you the mobile app for all your cell phones. But the owner, or actually the person who paid the bill, is in Texas. Yeah, and it's a young, you know. It doesn't because we're federally funded. We're going to pay for the app, and we pay at no cost, and the phones at no cost. So there's no additional charges anywhere. You're still going to pay your, I believe your son's going to pay the cell phone bill yes. like he always does. But there's no additional charges. There's no cost. Okay, thank so you. So he won't get any additional costs. Okay, Lynn has a question over here. Oh, hold on, Lynn. Hold on. Marla? Does your Wi-Fi have to be close to the phone? No. It can be a totally different place. It can be across the room. Your, the Wi-Fi that they provide connects to your existing router. Yeah. Okay, so hold on just one second. Yes, Lynn? Um, I, I think my um, caption phone is really old, and I'm not getting very good. It's not clear. And so the guy put some kind of little box in between connecting to with this new. Um, I would suggest that we go ahead and come out and install a brand new phone so you can have all the bells and whistles. Um, I know we connect better. I know the wireless is better. So I would just it says in the wiring or something. Ed. Let's go ahead and come out and put the new phone in and see if it's better. I think it will be because ours we have new software. So I think we're able to help you. So I'll just take your name and address and number and set up a time to come out and put the new phone in for you. Okay, you, you have a question? I think you just answered it, but I'm going to eliminate the landline. So how does it affect my caption call? Um, you, ha you have internet in the house, right? Yeah, I mean, email. Well, that's fine. Um, it sounds like you have a wireless connection in the house. So the phone is just going to go off that connection. You can eliminate. I don't have to do anything? No, we'll come out and, uh, and reinstall it or install the phone. Um. If you if the only other thing, just so everybody knows, if you don't have internet in the house, we can still work no, off we the have cell phone. Internet. Yeah, but we can still work off the cell phone because we have a a built-in connection to the cell phone. So it is still work. The one thing with when it's on the cell phone and you're using this phone, once you leave the house with the cell phone and go outside, 
then this phone won't work until you come back in the house with the cell phone. But most of the time we do them with uh, landlines and we have the internet in your house. So either way, we can pretty much do it. This new phone, I think it's been out about three or four months. It's a much bigger screen. You want one? Okay. Logan, can you can you get me some of these, please? You and uh, just so everybody knows, if you do get the the caption call phone, they will come out and install the mobile app at the same time if you want to. So you can have the mobile app and okay. this caption phone at the same time. Whatever you got, they can work with it. Make it better. Pretty much. <laughs> That's what we say. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay, so now you're done. Is Logan going to talk? Talk if he wants to. I'll talk. <laughs> Hello, my name's Logan. Um, I'm here local. I live right here in Laguna Hills, so I'm glad I'm finally going to see here. You want to show people this? Yeah. How? But uh, for me personally, what I do here at Caption Call is I'm a business growth account manager. All that it really is, is it's just fancy for me to go to places and meet cool people like you guys and yourselves. And I just seen how this has really blessed people's lives. For example, the other day I went in, I sometimes go into lobbies of ideologists and just set up a little table and answer any people's questions. I saw a man asleep on his chair and I had, a, I asked him, what, why were you sleeping in the chair? Was he just really tired? Was he feeling okay? He had told me that the doctor had given him an appointment, but since he can't hear that well over the phone, he got got in there way too early. And all the ideologists were out to lunch, so he had to wait there for three hours. For me, this gave me the opportunity to share what we do as Caption Call. He was able to get a phone installed, and the next time I saw him, he was coming out of his appointment, and he was as happy as he can be. And he had told me that the Caption Call phone had really changed his life, because he's able to read and more importantly, see those numbers that are hard to hear, those phone numbers that are hard to hear, those dates, those addresses are really hard to hear. So that way we can use our time more effectively. Um, but that's just a little bit about what we do here as Caption Call. We help uh, people's lives and help improve their quality of life as well. Okay. All right, I was just looking at the chat. Okay, I I have a thank question. you very much. Um, I have a question, Tony. Uh, if you would like to. Um, I know Sandy, you wanted to talk to them. Somebody want uh okay. So if you want to go ahead and step aside, just yes, Alan. There was a question online. Yeah, me, Alan. Who's asking the question? Oh, okay. So it looks like caption call uses um AI for their captions? Do they have any plans of using a stenographer in the future? Because that would help with people that have accents and stuff. Um, microphone, Logan, can you answer that question or Michael? Here's... We actually have an interpreter. So the interpreter does everything. We don't use AI because we found out there's some mistakes sometimes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Linda has a, my, we need a microphone. Yeah. How do I get the app on my iPhone? Um, I can, uh, Logan can help you today. We can take a QSR code and we can download it today. Okay. You thank just you. have to check that you um, have a hearing. That's the only thing. Okay. 
I was wondering in reference to the story that Tony told us why this situation exists if all this is available. I don't think over the years we, as a whole, clear cast and all of us have been out and said, hey, this is a product that can help you not hear better, but understand the conversation. You need, you need, you got to have a microphone. I, hear. I think we as a group of captions haven't been out enough and told people that this product is out there at no cost, no fees. And the more people that know about it, then the more people get out there. But the story that Tony just told us about the man that was deaf and separate from his family because he never got any contact, why is that existing if this is available? Because I don't think people actually know it's out there. I mean, you only see very few commercials. We're federally funded, so our money is limited. So we, it's word of mouth pretty much. But I'm I'm referring to the story that Tony yeah. told. Well, this man lives in San Diego, and it's the way the word gets out is for all of you here to join the hearing loss community, learn what there is to learn, and teach it to somebody else. That is, that is a responsibility that everybody has. I'm asking them to step up and learn what is available and speak to somebody else. You know, I, I have some announcements I wanna make and there's uh, in reference to this. now. Why this man, this man is isolated. He's not getting information from anywhere. So there's a lot of things in the world you don't know about and I don't know about. So let us, let's you and I step up, learn all we can and help our neighbor, our family and neighbor. We can't be responsible for everybody, but we can do a little bit. Okay. Now, um, Logan is working with Sandy right now. If somebody else wants to talk, uh, Michael, do you wanna get a chair and sit over there with somebody, grab somebody that wants to talk to you? I would like, please stay. I'd like to make some announcements and I wanna give, uh, you have the, okay, you have the microphone. Um, a little bit of announcement here, what's going on in Laguna Woods and hearing loops. So a new hearing loop was installed in Clubhouse 5. It's not hooked up yet. Come, It's coming. It, it's going to get finished. It's going to get hooked up. There was a, a hearing loop put in Clubhouse 6. And it's my understanding it's functional. Has anybody, does anybody go to meetings in Clubhouse 6? I have yet to check it out. I'm, I'm going to check it out. I'll report to you at the next meeting. Clubhouse One, uh, a, a, a hearing loop is going into the main room as it's being re refurbished now. It's part of the refurbishment. Repairs outstanding, and this just infuriates me. The, the um, Performing Arts Center, Dining Room One and Dining Room Two, um, they the loop that was installed got disturbed when they were re finishing the floor and it's been out since february i think or march and i i'm on them constantly and doggone it there's not enough people who care about people with hearing loss to attend to this I, it just makes me mad. It's, it's like we're not existent. We're invisible. We aren't visible enough. So I, I'm going to have to calm down here because I'm fighting for you guys every day, but I need your help. I need you to go to recreation, go to the GRF meetings and complain. Why isn't this hearing loop repaired? 
I know I have people come to me and say, you know, I, I go to a meeting every week there. I depend on that loop and it's not working. So you've just caused somebody to be isolated. GRF is not taking care of that. Moving on. Uh, on I have to I have to update this. This is um let me just oops. This is a list, it's over here, and it shows everything in Laguna Woods, what's available. I have to update this, but but I, I am going to update it. I'm gonna verify that Clubhouse 5 is installed and working, Clubhouse 6 is installed and working. And if I am told they finally found somebody who can fix the loop in, in uh, Clubhouse 3 Performing Arts Center, and they're coming this month. I, I I found somebody to fix it, and now we got to, He's got to come from Arizona to fix it. So uh, we have a question over here. Thank you. My question is very basic. What what do we need to benefit from the hearing loop in those um, clubhouses? We were hearing aids. What so what, what you need to find out, if you don't already know, contact your hearing aid provider and ask them if you have a T-coil. Gabby, let me uh, give her one of these. You can use when you make the phone call to find out you can you can use the verbiage that's on there and you can provide information um, for your hearing aid provider. If you're in the process of buying hearing aids, be sure and ask for a T coil. Now I had a whole meeting about this in July, and um, if you're interested, I can send you the link to watch the uh, the recording of that show. Um, here, I think, I think yeah. that you want, Lee wants one of these. Uh, not, not on the T coil, I think, but I have a question sure. about this paper. Okay. It's, okay. And one of the things in that it shows, uh, earphones. Yes. Now theaters provide earphones, but from what I can tell, okay. So, so it's specially adapted. Yes. This is called a loop receiver. So you can wear this. If your hearing aids do not have a T-coil, but you should find out if you have one. 80% of hearing aids have one and have it programmed. Bring it, bring it, have your audiologist or hearing aid dispenser uh, activate it for you. And yes, you can wear this. Uh, better yet, if you like earbuds, you can attach earbuds to this, you know, and just oh, use okay. ear, bring your own earbuds. No, and just, I, I, no, and just, okay. If you have hearing aids and you want to continue wearing them, you can wear this over your hearing You can, aids. so you can wear it over your hearing aids. Yes. Ah. Yeah. The microphone on the hearing aid. Ah, I see. It's up here. Well, some of them are in the ear, but a lot of them are, the, mine is at the top. So you want to find the sweet spot. Yeah. And, and put put the earpiece over your microphone. Yes. Okay, but, okay, that, if you're going to a theater, and one of the things that drives me crazy is when I go to the theater, I don't understand half the words that are being spoken. And particularly with musicals. But, so, something like that. This only works, this particular one, here in Laguna Woods, it's no. a loop receiver. It only works for a hearing loop. Yeah. Now, there are other systems. Okay. If you go to the uh, the theater in Elisa Viejo, I can't remember the name of it, but that's the one I usually go to. No, are you speaking of a movie theater? Yes, a movie okay, theater. Yeah. Go to a movie theater. Go to the customer counter and ask for a listening device. And you can just wear it and... But, but, and it would, 
Okay. You can borrow one from them. So public places are required to uh, provide that. And that theater does. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. I noticed uh, the clubhouse too, and the ballroom, the T court doesn't work. Oh, this is the first I'm hearing about it. I complained for you times, but then I try again, but already have several months. Clubhouse too, I've been there several times, it didn't work. Clubhouse uh, and the ball, ballroom, I think the last time I attended probably about the, what was several weeks ago, still did not work. I told the lady, the girl outside, they did, they did not know what is going on. The clubhouse supervisor needs to know. Okay. And I, now that I know, I'll make sure they know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Another question, Tony. Did I understand you to say that you can buy a device that you wear over your hearing aids? Do you live here in Laguna Woods? I live in Laguna Woods. Okay. So it, 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 we're in the process of filling all the clubhouses with hearing loops. No, you just put a thing over your own yes. hearing aids. Yes, this is a loop receiver. And it works, yeah. You can borrow this from the office. Can I buy one of those? I could arrange for that. But but why would you? I mean, you could, yes, you could. There, there are a couple hundred dollars, but yeah. talk to me, talk to me offline. Laguna Woods will provide it for you. To borrow. Okay. But could you please use the mic, Dr. Gabby? Yes. I was telling him a better place to start is to see your hearing aid dispenser or audiologist and first see if your hearing aids can have a telecoil loop turned on. Right. Because those are helpful, but a better option is getting it right in your hearing aids with your prescription. Exactly. So start with your hearing care provider. If you don't have a telecoil, then that's your backup plan whenever you go to these places. Yes. Telecoil or T-coil. Give him, give him one of these. Yeah. This has all the fancy words. Yes. That will help you to talk to your hearing aid provider. And uh, did you have a question? Um, I just wanted to know um, the difference between the caption calls and the TTY phone system. What is that about? A TTY, you have to type everything. Uh, there's very few people that use it anymore. They just don't. I, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah. yeah. No, the, ca the caption phones make it so easy. You don't want to be typing out your conversation. And you don't want to wait for somebody else to type back to you. So it was, the, it was great technology way back when that was the beginning things have changed dramatically so yeah okay we're going to move on i want to talk to you what hlaa is currently doing for you so hlaa we're the mission viejo chapter i'm going to be changing the name soon but um you know they have chapters all over the united states and the main office is located in bethesda uh, Rockville now. It's in Rockville, Maryland. Uh, I was employed by them for nine years. I lived in Maryland. And um, I know very well what they do. Currently, they're, they've been working with the FCC to improve the issues around captioning on the TV. Um, live captioning uh, has nothing to do with the cell phones. 
but they have just, oh, let me get my, let me get my notes here. With the new laws that they just They have two years to make it super easy. Now I don't have it. Oh, there it is. Okay, a new rule is adopted on July the 18th by the Federal Communications that requires television and video captioning, display settings to be easier to access. And they've got two years to get their stuff together. So what that means is TV manufacturers usually have the settings in a remote control. It's impossible. It's, it, it's so, so difficult most of the time. They got two years to clean that up. And so then any TV that you buy um, will be much, much easier. You just press a button and uh, you, you have access to the settings. Let me just see here. So there's a, there's the caption button on a remote and it should be as easy as clicking that and answering the questions. So um, here, uh, HLAA has been working on that literally for years. As a matter of fact, they were breaking ground when they got the um, FCC to require captions for primetime TV. And now it's 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 almost 24 hour TV, except some old movies are still not captioned, but anything that's produced now must have captions available. So is there anybody that doesn't use captions on their TV? Or did you know did you know that there are captions on the TV? Thank you, Alan. I saw you raise your hand. Okay. So this has been a multi-year effort and there are other organizations that joined in with HLAA and it just takes forever to have these things approved. So that's in the works. Uh, okay, I have provided feedback forms. Um, uh, there's some on the table here, there was some in the front. And I would like you to please, um, you can do it anonymously if you want, but if you need me to answer a question for you, you better tell me who you are and I'll get back to you. Give me your uh, email address preferably, or your telephone number if you need a phone call, please complete that. And, um, and I will get back to you. And just a couple more things. Okay, I want your feedback. Now I'm gonna give you some feedback. I send out emails and I ask, to R ask for you to RSVP and I get very few RSP RSVPs. Now, this, this is probably not big enough and I'm sorry about that. Let me see if I can make it. Right at the top, Please let me know. I will join in person. I will join on Zoom. All you have to do is click. I will join in person if you're coming in person. If if you don't give me a response, I consider you're not coming. So anyway, that's my feedback to you, my people. <laughs> Please communicate with me when you're coming. So I know how many cookies to buy. Okay, how many seats? I'm hoping that we're gonna need more seats in here, more tables. All right. I wanna let you know a little bit of things that I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm a committee member uh, for people in Laguna Woods. You know about the, you should know about the Laguna Woods Foundation. And I'm working with a, a, a group of ladies um, who are looking for grant money to help pay for hearing aids. It would be like a copay. It would be a handsome copay. So I we've been meeting now uh, once a month. And um, so I'm, I'm the hearing loss representative um, 
There's other people involved in this meeting. Social services will be a part of the selection and we are going to have an event in the fall to have hearing screenings. So um, to see who would be eligible and, uh, and we're waiting for the grant to be approved to move everything forward. So I'm working on that. Um, we had a ch uh, chapter board meeting, and as I already reported, we've added two more board members to the Mission Viejo chapter. Yay, thank you guys. Um, I am the host of a monthly meeting for California chapter leaders, and we do this on Zoom. So once a month, I host a meeting. So I have Northern California, Southern California, uh, chapter leaders, we all get together and try to figure out how to do this better and be a better service to you. So I am the um, California State Southern California chapter coordinator. And that assignment came to me from the national office. So, and so then I started having these meetings, especially when the pandemic happened. And we keep our leaders together, we support each other. Um, I've made two trips just in the, since the last meeting to Long Beach, and I helped them set up for hybrid meetings. I've met with the national board member of HLAA uh, regarding hospital accessibility projects. And so we're going to work on something. Uh, there's so many things that we can do and that we, we need to have done in our hospital systems so that we can order lunch and we can communicate with the doctors and and we can hear better and they need to provide accessibility for us so i'm we're, i'm going to be working with her on that um i attended the hla california state association board meeting and um and i spent a lot of time preparing for this meeting so I kind of do this as almost full time, but I just want you to know I, I'm not just sitting around, you know, doing nothing in between meetings. Um, now, how to live with hearing loss. Today's tip. This is something you're never going to get information you're going to get from your hearing aid provider. I'm going to talk. This is just one aspect of the American Disabilities Act. And this conversation came up in our chapter leader meeting. And I thought, that this is so great. I'm going to talk to my members here. You, as a person with hearing loss, and you don't need proof, but when you buy your airline ticket, you should identify as a person needing assistance because of your hearing loss. The assistance you will get is that you will be able to pre-board with the young children and with the people in wheelchairs. So, because I've missed flights because I didn't hear it. So I get up there and I get in the pre-board section. They know I'm there when they're boarding, they make sure I, I get on the plane. Also, if for some reason people are getting bumped on the plane, a person with disability will never be asked to take another flight. It'll be, it'll be handled very specially. So even though you say, oh, I can hear it, I can do this, I can do that, identify, please, as a person who needs assistance because of your hearing loss. Um, and you may even uh, have the stewardess or steward eye or whatever they call them now, um, come and ask you if you understood the announcement. Because most of the time I don't understand it. So that's my tip for today. If you are doing any flying, um, Tell a friend, if you know, if you have somebody who has hearing loss and they're going to be flying, tell them they all just 
for the asking. They don't have to show their audiogram. They don't have to prove anything. I'm a person with hearing loss. I want a free board. You can, if you're buying your ticket online, there's a place for you to do that there. If you're buying at a ticket uh, counter, uh, you just identify that with the with the ticket person. Okay. And uh, I have put over here, it says TSA CARES. If you have any questions about this program, about the ADA and pre-boarding, uh, you may have other issues, oxygen, you may have issues with needing wheelchairs, uh, walkers or whatever. Uh, talk to TSA CARES. There's a phone number there. Um, the hours are listed. Pick up the card over here and make things go smooth for yourself. Okay. Whew, I'm tired. Okay, look at that. It's time to go. You have any more questions? Any questions? Okay, Natalie has a question. Hold on, wait for the microphone. Who else wants to talk to Caption Call? Looks like they're free. Or at least they're cheap. No, <laughs> I was trying to be funny. I'm wondering if there's some way you can make the screen here as bright and read readable as the caption call screen is. This gray and well, I the find lights, it yeah. difficult to read the screen. Yeah. Um, we probably should have dimmed the lights. And I could have made it a little bit bigger. I always, I love getting at the end where I said, I wished you would have done that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Natalie, you can interrupt me anytime and say something like that. Okay. Um, Daniel, do we have more ice cream? All you want. You want, you want another ice cream? Just step up. Daniel will give you one. And Caption Call is here to talk to you. Um, about whatever service you're interested with them. And please be sure to turn in your feedback sheets so that I can continue to be of service to you. All right, thank you for coming. Our next meeting is, uh, I believe it's September the 8th, and um, we will be bringing hope to uh to people with hearing loss. No audio.